What's up everyone, this is David Hoffman from David's Been here coming at you from beautiful sunny Kyiv, Ukraine. Today I'm gonna to take you on an awesome tour of the city. Starting off right here at the Motherland Monument. Then from here, we're gonna have some Ukrainian street food. Yes, there is street food here in the Ukraine. And then from there, we're going to an awesome brewery to have beers and dinner. My friend. Yes. What is Another this? Another beautiful day. And uh, we're at the one of the most picturesque but also epic places of Kiev. The huge uh, statue of Motherland or Batkivshina Mate. It's one of the tallest statues in the world, 16 meters taller than Statue of Liberty in New York. It's part of the museum Motherland that is calling to protect her since it's the part of the World War II Museum. History of Ukraine in the World War II Museum. The Cup of Glory, everything here is made. It has um, this Soviet spirit in it because it was made back to the Soviet days, but it says a lot about the Ukraine and the and the heroic days of Ukraine during the World War II. On the way to the Motherland Monument, we have to walk through the Bridge of Fame. Basically, this is the tunnel. The bridge is above us, right? And in here, you have an illustration of basically uh, pride. You know, no fear during Soviet era. There was no fear. You know, serious and tough. Serious and tough. The spirit you get from all of the monuments. It's like that. The face expressions around, it's all about uh, decisiveness, uh, courage, mm -hmm. never give up, protect motherland. Exactly. And over here we have soldiers and obviously during war it's not just the soldiers who are fighting, it's also the civilians. Over here we have civilians, right? So there we have a mother, she obviously maybe lost her son or somebody in the war. So she's holding it together and that's basically what this is representing, right? And if we keep walking, mm -hmm. there it is. Wow, huge. Massive statue up there. Gigantic, powerful. Yeah. Yeah, the next section we have on the left side it's the resistance. The partisans were also were actively uh, involved in the war during the occupation. While on the other side it's the back front line. All the industry, all the factories, uh, everything was oriented towards the needs of the war and of the army. And this is it. The Motherland Monument, massive statue right in front. We have three tanks. Over here to the left, we have like a mini park. We have the flag. Really unique engineering structure made of stainless steel. It goes uh, deep underground. It's one of the most stable statues uh, in uh, the city. It can stand against the earthquakes of eight or uh, nine uh, degrees of uh, Richter schedule. And also another cool thing about it that on the top of the latest show, there is observation spot. Uh, when the lockdown is over, one can go all the way to the very top, the view is breathtaking from the top. Also, again, these days uh, people ask why it's holding uh, sword and shield as a motherland, since it's not supposed to, but it's because, again, it's the part of the museum. And the museum itself is inside the lady, it's in inside the statue. Walking from the motherland statue back to the entrance, we pass by basically a mini museum with World War II tanks, planes, what else is in here? It's all original uh, pieces, but also these water ducks, the, the cars that could go on the surface on the land and also in the water. Exactly. T-34 is the third one uh, in the wow. row of the tanks. Then you have MiG on all the aircrafts that were participating in the battles. It's original. Pieces. All original. And there's some more uh, tanks over there. The, but that one from the other war, from Afghanistan war, later period. Okay. All right. I need some street food. <laughs> Let's go. Time to re recover. <laughs> re I know, I know. I need some energy right now. I'm tired. I love their clothing. Oh, they will sing a song. No way. And so, why are they just like this? Slava Ukraina! <laughs> There's the village in Ukraine, in Kiev. It's called Pazneki, and this is where their band is from. The oldest uh, singer is 86. She sings like a young girl. Sing at the marriage, at the weddings. The band is 35 years old. They're called Holosuhi, which basically means uh, voices. Well, that was a nice surprise. Now let's get in the car and let's eat some street food. So where are we now? So we are back to Grishetik, the main street. And uh, the most famous uh, street food corner, just around the corner of the next building. And what a beautiful day. I mean, right now it's, uh, it's 4.30. Sun is out, people are walking, gorgeous. 
So I'm gonna be surprised. I don't know exactly what we're gonna eat. I want it to be a surprise. They call it Kiev hot dog before they even knew here what hot dog means. So another hot dog. I ate a lot of hot dogs in Germany and in Brazil, so. I'll be surprised by what, what they call here hot dog. And this is it, number three, and it's basically a corn dog. So it's bread, the fried bread with the hot dog inside. I don't think they use corn, I don't know exactly what they use, but it looks very similar to a corn dog. I've eaten that many times at carnivals, like fairs in America. I haven't had it in many years, and they have, is this many different versions of it, or what is this menu? No, it's also the uh, drinks, the soft drinks that you can get with it, but uh, the only food that they serve, it's this, uh, it's one type of it. It's easy to find by smelling it, and it's easy to find by always queue next to the this window. Uh, it goes really, really fast because the service is fast. Okay, let's get one. Okay, so it's 25, right? So I have 100. Thank you. Oh, look at this guy. It's oily. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so let's go eat over here. So basically, it looks like an empanada or like a massive uh, pastel or samosa. Okay, guys, let's try it. Mm. Mm -hmm. So you can see, nice fried dough. Inside, fluffy. You see the hot dog there. Mmm. It was good. Fast, easy meal. Basically one dollar, right? One US dollar. Okay. What's missing is like mustard, ketchup, and spice. So in the classic way, it's just this. But they don't have any sauces, right? I mean, you can ask. So there is ketchup and mustard. We just asked for it. They didn't give it to you, so ask for it. In a classic way, you are not. You're not supposed to, yeah. I always need some yeah, mustard on my influence. hot dogs. It's influence from somewhere. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. Spicy. Yeah. Give me more. Give me more. I need some, right? Mmm. Oh. 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 I feel like my eyes going. That's a spicy, spicy mustard. Yes. I'm done with this. Ranking it wise, no, no, no more. There are pigeons around to, to uh -huh. finish. You know what? Let's give it to the pigeons. There you go, guys. Ah, yeah, they're hungry. Immediately, immediately. Immediately. So now you guys know if you want to try some street food here in Kiev, that's the place to come to. So we're next to the main boulevard, number three. It's really inexpensive, really affordable. You know, basically one US dollar, you eat that big thing. I got really full. In terms of hot dogs, you guys know I don't love hot dogs. I've eaten a lot of them in my life. I prefer like straight up sausages, you know, like good. Uh, real meat. Yeah, yeah, real meat. Now let's go to the biggest brewery in the Ukraine, Barvar. Yes. Is that it right? We tasted it before, you said it right. Barvar. Yeah, but now we're going to the actual facility. We're gonna try many beers and some food. Let's go. And if you guys didn't notice, I just got a New Jersey. <laughs> Dinamo. Dinamo. Dinamo, Kiev. 29 championships. Each one of these means 10, so next year look at their third star if they win, right? As, as it can be. Yeah. Kiev, 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 Kiev. Kiev. It's the best soccer team in the country. You gotta go to their stadium, buy it there. Cost me like 50 US dollars. Definitely worth it. And here we go, going to Bavar. Can't wait. Can't wait to get a beer. I need one right now. Where is the brewery located? It's uh, for the first time in, uh, during these three days, we are crossing the river. It's on the left side of the of the city. So left bank, right? Left bank. Okay. It's taking a while to get here. Uh, roughly 45 minutes because of traffic. You know, right now is, you know, 5.30. Big traffic jam. What day is it? Is it Friday. It's Friday. Okay, that's why. When you're traveling and you're having lots of fun, the days just all blend together. Just remember when your flight is. That's important. <laughs> so we're almost at the brewery, but I wanted to show you something. This area has a lot of Soviet style buildings. If you've never been to Eastern Europe, you know, anywhere that was Soviet, this is what it's like, right? The Soviets built this, just all square boxes. That's it. Right. They were typical projects for the houses and wherever you go throughout Soviet Union or former Soviet Union cities and countries, they will be the same looking houses. Yeah, my, my father's family is from Hungary and when I go to Budapest, you have the same style. 
it's all the same like this. Not the whole city, certain sections, right? Completely different Kiev compared to the right bank. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But and this is we made to the brewery. Let's go. How you doing, Sasha? Good? Good. All right. I love going into breweries. This is the best. This is like the brew house, right? Barrel systems. Oh, okay, yeah. Gotta put on some, uh, some stuff, right? Let's do this. <laughs> Good? In a chemical library, uh, not la la library, laboratory. Laboratory. Uh, Sauce is one of the brewers and he's showing us right now the ingredients, which is barley, malt, and hops. Um, That's it. Oh, and water. So I just came up to the top of their brew system. Um, I think it's a two barrel system. It's huge. I don't know because they do it in liters. But over here on the screen, which is Zip Technologies, it shows you basically everything they do. It says seven to eight tons a day of beer. They make so many different beers. Obviously, breweries, they make lots of beers. I think it's like a dozen easy. You got German Pills, Golden Ale, Milk Stout, Hoppy Lager. WTF Baltic Porter, that's the one I want to try. The Baltic Porter. Everything looks amazing. Oh, Imperial style. Oh, what? This is all of them? Oh, it's crazy. So they made like 50 beers, but obviously they don't have all of them on top. They probably have like 20 something beers. Incredible. So let's keep going this way, no? They have their own water that they get it from the underground. So it's not delivered, it's, uh, it's straight here. And here, as you get deeper into the production, are the fermentation tanks. There's three rows, so you have four tons, six tons. Two, tank, two tons. And two yeah, tons over there, so smaller batches. Okay, so the reason they do that is because they might make something, you know, really seasonal. It's quick, they put it out, you know, in the market, and if it does well, then they reproduce and then make, you know, more batches, right? So once you pass all the tanks, you get here to the distribution center. Basically, this is where they fill up the kegs that they ship out. They also have a canning system and a bottling system, right? Beautiful cans. And obviously, right after the distribution area, you have the storage. So this is where you have hundreds and thousands of cans, bottles, and kegs that are ready to ship out to different bars, different restaurants all around the Ukraine. What's in here? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It is freezing. <laughs> wow, look at all the kegs. So you have the small kegs, the beer kegs, a lot of bottles, a lot of cans. Oh my God, it is huge. Oh, and these are all the different types of hops, no? Like all the different cascades, salt and yeah, 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 right? Da. Incredible. I love the branding. This is so nice. Baba. Really cool. So now we're entering their experimental brewery, and this is where it all started, right? This is where the brewery began. Uh, experimental breweries are always like these smaller fermentation tanks, obviously, because they make smaller batches, they try, they like, they continue. This is great. Oh man, this is amazing. And they have a lot of barrels, so they're aging a lot of beer. I think I have to try a beer. I need to drink a beer. <laughs> the equipment here was done uh, handmade by the local engineer. No. It's not No way. Handmade. This is all handmade. So it doesn't come from a company. Somebody made it here. Custom, custom, custom built. We bought the, the pieces, the details, but it was made by the local guy. He said he has 12 for me to try. <laughs> we're gonna try one from here? Yes. So I think we're gonna try a beer directly from one of these fermenting tanks. Look at this. This is the best beer. If you wanna try good beer, like great beer, go to the brewery because you get, you know, draft came from right here. But if you wanna try the best beer on the planet, get it directly from the tanks. Very light. What is this beer? It's a blonde, he said. Mmm, nice creamy. Very creamy. Tastes like a more like, like a cream ale. No? Yeah. But it's a blonde? A blonde. He's like, you don't know what you're talking about, David. <laughs> After you have blonde, you have to have dark beer. That's what my friend here is telling me. So we're gonna pour a dark, dark beer. Look at that. What do we have here? Here we go. Mmm. A little chocolatey. No? Oh wow, so smooth. Incredible. Ashes to ashes, black to black. That's the name of it? I mean, it's just black to black and my association is ashes to ash. <laughs> But, um, a bit 
too heavy for me. Yeah, my friend's too much. So this is black to black. It's not so heavy. I mean, it's heavy, but it's not like any crazy alcoholic beer. It's not an imperial style, it's a regular style. Mmm, like I say, the logo is the best. Being Viking. Oh, another one over here? It says he's gonna offer you some heavy archery thing. Okay, let's do it. Boys, do Yeah, I told him, don't throw it up all the way. Can't throw any of this away. We're trying this, huh? It's gonna be good. Oh, be careful. Oh. <laughs> you can't handle this. Mmm, it's smooth. So what it, what's, it's like, I think it's like chocolate and vanilla. I, put your I don't it. know, I might be off here. There's too many different flavors in here. The thing with beer is that it's so diverse, so different. Wow, what a beer. You gotta try, you gotta try. Okay. Mm -hmm. so this is an imperial style that is supposed to be a year in that fermentation tank. It's only been four months. It's super complex, lots of different hops in here, 11% alcohol, it is delicious. It's like literally a dessert. This is a dessert beer. It's too good. Dark beers all day. David, let's go to the bar now to try some other beers. And we can also eat here if you want to. I might have a bite. I'm pretty hungry. This is great, look at this. So in like the restaurant, you can see the brewery right here. Oh my God, this is awesome. I love this place. This is like the most beautiful outdoor brewery I've ever been to. You have the wood over here. Obviously, that's what the name means, Lisoplica, right? Over here, it's like, like barn house brewery, right? Super high ceilings, lots of wood everywhere. You got the fire going. I have three beers, really beautiful beers. They're all unique. This is the Oriental Ale. Here we have the Deepa, so not Dua Lipa, Deepa, double IPA. And right here we have the Strong Ale. And over here we have some pork ribs with some yummy french fries. Mmm. -hmm. Mm. Let's try them. Whoa. It's like flowery. That's so unique. Oh, and obviously this is getting stronger like this, right? I forgot the exact percentages here, but I know this is like 8% and this is a little higher, this is lower. Mm-hmm, mm. It's almost like a, I don't know if that's ginger, but it's like that flavor, you know? Something different, not fruity though, more flour. Mm-hmm, mm, it's a dank deepa. Mmm, nice. It's a, so it's thick body, not crazy with the hops, but really nice. Wow, this is good, you should try this. And then over here, we have the strong ale. Strong ales are hard to come by. People don't really make them so often, but I like strong ales. I usually buy it in canned form, right? Whew. <laughs> That's a, it's a strong ale. This has to be up in the 11 or 12 percenter. <laughs> Try this. Mm. And it's not the, uh, it's what? It's ale? Not stout, it's not porter, right? It's, mm. it's ale. Stout, porter, they're all ales, but this is just called a strong ale because it's just very strong. This slight? I mean, like, uh, like this? Clear? Clear. clear ale will be like a sessionable IPA, very light. You're having, I think that's like chicken lollipop, right? <laughs> that's, that's what they call it in India. And, and right here we have, you're putting gloves on? <laughs> so I'm having pork ribs with caramelized onions on top. Oh, it's gonna be so good. Mm. Missing the... the yeah, right? Okay. <laughs> they do this so good. Uh, oh yes, he, has, he wow. said that it's locally made. They have their own grill with the wood, uh, with different kinds of wood. Mm -hmm. that makes the taste special. Yeah, smoky. Mm. Very smoky. Slow cooked. Mm. 
Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is the language. <laughs> hey, that's my language. Mm -hmm. People always say like, David, you do too much hums. I'm like, mm hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Tasty. Mm. I can't stop eating. Mm. I've told you guys, I'm not a huge fan of pork, but pork ribs. Mm. Every day. I'm ridiculous. With the caramelized onion on top. Mm -hmm. And it's also caramelized. Mm -hmm. I like the onions. We need a perfect place to come on a Friday, Saturday night. Early dinner, you know? 5 p.m., 6 p.m., come here. Have some beers, have some delicious food. Obviously, this is like uh, elevated bar food. That's what I call it. Like it's up, uh -huh. you know? It's not regular bar food. And the chicken is um, sweet and spicy at the same time. Yeah, sweet and spicy? Mm. Man, just sweet and fatty. What a great day, huh? Mm. And there's end of the day as well. Mm -hmm. They, they can do cheers with the bones. I swear, <laughs> probably one of my favorite ribs ever. Just for sure, like almost part of the table. You got that, you know, that pork here in the area. Just slow cooked, smoky taste, caramelized onions, get that sweet flavor. And these, these fries with this sauce, I needed food before I drink anymore. <laughs> So if you are drinking, always, you know, drink responsibly. Don't be drinking and driving, for sure, never. Eat food before you drink. It's a rule. I love your country. Ah, Ukraine's amazing. And everybody's so nice. Yeah, they know how to feed you. Mm-hmm. Definitely. <laughs> I popped right there. <laughs> Let me try a little wing, a little chicken lollipop. I'm gonna get this thing, I have to try this. Mmm. Mmm. It's like a sweet and sour sauce. Mm hmm Oh, wow. Super sweet. A little spicy. Mmm. And they're big. They gave you like, what? Eight? Yeah, maybe two of already. Mm-hmm. Good. Yeah, again, this is like more like tapas style, right? No. I mean, it makes you feel like drinking more. Mm -hmm. I'm done. I can't eat anymore. But I will finish these beers. <laughs> We're done. Today or for the for all Kiev? Unfortunately for all of Kiev. No. No. I know. I know. I know. I said it never. It will never end. I know. But now it's over. No way. Unfortunately, that's what I always happens. To, I don't want it to end. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it. We did Motherland Monument street food. Brewery, I'm tired. I'm ready to go. <laughs> we, did all, we did all, yes. Yeah. It's been cool. Well, guys, I hope you love the video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Comment below, subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content. Please link up with Margarita. When you're in Kiev, yeah. she will show you the whole entire city from food to culture, beer, street food. She knows it all. Well, yeah, waiting for you and all uh, your friends and kids. Thank you. Well, I'm going to sleep.